Okay, so um, we're going to talk now about energy of oscillations. And so if we have this oscillating system here, it's at its lowest point. This would be equilibrium where it would rest. And there's its highest point. We're going to start by graphing. We're going to graph energy here. And I'm going to start with potential energy with respect to displacement. So we'll say this is xm, this is negative xm, and this is 0. Okay, and so if we're going to start with potential energy, let's use for potential energy the color green. Okay, and so that will be U. And so potential energy is going to be zero at equilibrium position because that's a place where no forces or where the forces acting on it are in equilibrium, they're balanced. Okay, which means nothing is pushing it anywhere. Okay, and as it goes away from that position, the force is acting on an increase, as does the potential energy. Same thing the other way. Now it doesn't gain negative energy. You can't store negative energy in a spring, so in both directions it's going to increase. Okay, and so it looks, it should look parabolic. Okay, which makes sense because we said earlier that potential energy was proportional to x squared. Okay. Now let's look at kinetic energy. Okay, I'm going to use red for kinetic energy. So for kinetic energy, at these peaks, it momentarily comes to rest before turning around, and the fastest velocity occurs at this equilibrium position, and so that's where it would have the most kinetic energy. Okay, so kinetic energy looks something like this. Maxing out in the middle and zeroing out at the two ends. Okay, and in all cases, the total energy would be the sum of these and should stay the same, at least for a system where energy is conserved. Okay, um, and then we can actually look at an example of this. So here we have an oscillating system, we have a spring oscillating. Okay, and you can see that interchange between potential energy and kinetic energy as it oscillates. Okay. And so K max happening right here, and then potential energy max happening here and here, with kinetic energy here and here being zero, and at this point, potential energy being zero. So if I wanted to calculate the energy of this system, Okay, and let's say that this is a spring system, so I know that the energy stored in the spring is equal to 1 half kx squared. That means that at any moment the energy would be equal to, or the mechanical energy would be equal to its potential energy plus its kinetic energy. Okay, and so if potential energy is 1 half kx squared, then and kinetic energy would be 1 half mv squared, then the total energy of a spring would be equal to this. Now, if I wanted to know how much energy a spring had, the easiest approach would be to look at the energy that it has at these peaks here and here, because those are the places where kinetic energy is zero. So total energy can be found adding these in certain places when you're at the maximum position, so x of m, the amplitude, then kinetic energy is zero, and so we can say the total energy of a spring can be calculated using this equation right here. Okay, we can also calculate it using these, but when it's at its amplitude, we can find it using this. Okay, okay, so here we have our oscillating system a spring with a k value of 100 newtons per meter, causing a mass with um, a, a mass of 0.5 kilograms to oscillate with an amplitude of 0.2 meters, I want you to tell me how much energy this system has. Then we can use our energy equation, uh, 1 half k x sub m squared, okay? We're using this because at x sub m, that means that the kinetic energy is zero. Okay, so 1 half times 100 newtons per meter times 0.2 meters squared. Okay, so we get one half times 
100 times 0 0.04, okay, that'd be 50 times 0 0.04, which is going to give us 2 joules of energy. Okay, so the next question I have for you, how much more energy would this spring have if the mass was instead 1 kilogram? Hopefully you see it would be the same since the total energy of the spring, if we know its amplitude, and it's, so its maximum position, we know be at rest. And we know the stretch, the K value of the spring, you can see here it doesn't even depend on the mass. Okay. So the next question I have though is this. What would be the velocity of this mass when it passes through that equilibrium position? Well the way we're going to do that is at that equilibrium at the equilibrium position we have potential energy and kinetic energy. At that point, potential energy is equal to zero. So we get E is equal to one half and the squared will two joules equals one half times 0.5 kilograms times B squared. Okay? So we're going to multiply by two, divide by 0.5, get that eight equals B squared, and that B is equal to 2.82 meters per second. So that's the maximum velocity. Okay? So the next question I have, we know how fast it's moving in equilibrium. We know how much total energy it has. How fast would it be moving when it's at a position one half of the way between equilibrium and the amplitude? So one half of 0.2 meters or 0.1 meters. So when it's at that position of 0.1 meters, and let's say it's at negative 0.1 meters, how fast is it moving? Well here we're going to use our energy equation again. So energy is going to be equal to potential energy plus kinetic energy. Okay, so one half times 100 newtons per meter. At this position our displacement is negative 0.1 meters. We're going to square it and then plus one half Times of mass of 0.5 kilograms and then a velocity squared. Our energy here now is 2 joules. Okay, so we simplify all this. Okay, so we get 2 joules equals 0.5 joules plus 0.25 v squared. Okay, now before we continue solving, I just want to point out this. At that halfway point, the potential energy is 0.5 joules. Okay. If you think about the fact that the potential energy graph was quadratic, that means that if we cut this distance right here in half, we lose three quarters of the energy. So the energy here is one fourth of the energy here. Okay. And so if we had energy of two joules, a quarter of that would be 0.5 joules. All right, anyway, to finish solving, what we're going to do here is subtract 0.5 divided by 0 0.25. We find that at that halfway position, there's a velocity of about 2.45 meters per second. Okay? All right, so now I'm going to show an example of damped simple harmonic motion, which is when what really happens when we start to take account to things like friction. And instead of oscillating forever, that energy is periodically lost to thermal energy, which means it has less and less potential energy, causing those oscillations to be smaller and smaller. So before we talk more about it, I'm just going to show just right here a simple uh, animation of it. And so you can see that thermal energy increasing, that interchange between kinetic energy and potential energy as it slowly comes to a stop. Now, you can never really take away all the energy from something, but we can at least remove all this kinetic energy so it doesn't look like it's oscillating. And all that energy has gone into the spring, into the mass, into the air as thermal energy. But this whole system, even when we can't see it, has really, really small oscillations. 
and we can add energy to them by pushing it and amplifying those oscillations. And sometimes the damping of an oscillation can be really predictable. And so I'm going to show you this graph right here. And um, we're not going to get much into this. But um, using differential equations, you can come up with this equation right here for the position of an object and this equation right here for the amplitude of an oscillating system.